Today's Monday, September 21st, and I just did my first round of Trader Joe's fall shopping. I think for a lot of people, fall is like their favorite time to shop at Trader Joe's. Fall and winter, probably. I think for me, it's fall. Spring and summer has some okay stuff too, but I think fall has the best stuff. And luckily, more and more of that stuff each year is vegan. So I got a ton of stuff last night. I spent like $70. Uh, most of the stuff is fall theme, but some, a couple of items that are just new items that I wanted to try. My battery's about to die already. Okay, new battery, we're back in business. It sounds like there's like 20 planes flying above my house right now, so hopefully that stops. I swear, it sounds, can you hear it? It sounds like they're doing tricks or something. It sounds like the fake airplane noise that you make when you're feeding a baby. Anyway, what I was saying is I got some fall stuff, but I got some other new items that I'm excited to try, some of which I already tried. I actually bought all of this stuff to prepare for like some overnight pet sitting that I was doing over the weekend, so I've tried a couple of the items. The first of which I don't have because I ate it all, I will show you. It's the rainbow wrap, which has like a curried hummus. They call it a curried hummus. I think it's like a chickpea, curried chickpeas. It's very chunky, which that word sounds gross, but like in a good way. It's more like a chickpea salad to me, I think. And it also has sweet potatoes, beets, and spinach. So this is not a new item. I think it came out initially as a seasonal item because I really liked it. And then they stopped carrying it for a while and then they brought it back and it seems like they just kept it maybe it just does really well so they decided to keep it all year it does feel like a fall item to me i don't know let me know if that's what's going on at your trader joe's if this is a seasonal item at yours or if it's something they've kept because i don't really know if every trader joe's kind of varies on that okay so the first couple items i got are tortilla chips we got these fall leaf tortilla chips and then these are just called pumpkin tortilla chips. I thought it was pumpkin spice, it's just pumpkin. So these pumpkin ones, I'm pretty sure weren't vegan, unless I'm thinking, it's very possible that I'm thinking of another similar item. Um, but I think that this was something that I bought a few years ago and it turned out to have honey in it and I ate it and I realized it had honey. It's also possible I'm thinking of something else. I kind of think there was like a cinnamon kind of tortilla chips. Anyway, I'm pretty sure I did also have these last year when they were vegan and I liked them. I kind of wish I could taste test everything, but some of these items I'll have tried already and I'll be able to tell you what I thought of them. I will also be posting on Instagram, actually by the time you see this, because I'm saving it for Vlogtober, I will probably have tried more of the items, so check out my Instagram and I will update you on what I think. So, and then these fall leaf tortilla chips, which I feel like these might seem like, you know, not much, right? They're just tortilla chips that they're colorful, but I've tried like other colorful tortilla chips and like specifically ones from Trader Joe's. And I don't know why these ones taste better. These ones are my favorite. I don't I think it's partly the shape I think it's partly the flavor, um, but I really like these. And last uh, fall, or maybe it was the year before, no, it must probably last fall, um, I got a bag at the beginning of the season, and then at the end, I was like, I really like these. I'm going to keep them around. Uh, I went to go stock up, and they didn't have any more. So I think they're pretty popular. Yesterday, I only got one bag, but I think since I will probably be doing multiple fall haul trips, uh, I'll grab some more next time. So I got these sweet cinnamon-filled Korean pancakes. I had a couple of these for breakfast this morning, and they were pretty good. And I think, okay, when I say pretty good, I think it was my fault. I think they will be better the next time I have them. There's four in the thing, and I had two. So here's the thing with me and frozen foods. It doesn't matter if they say they don't recommend microwaving. Like, they can say that, and I'm going to try to microwave it anyway. So this does have microwave directions. Now I realize it says microwave slash stovetop directions. So they tell you to microwave it for 20 to 30 seconds and then switch to stove top. So it's just kind of to give you like a little bit of a head start. So I didn't do that. I just microwaved them and I, I mean, they were good, but I see why they recommend cooking them in a pan. So I would suggest doing that. Obviously I haven't tried that yet, but it does seem like it would be better. And then topping wise, um, I'm not sure what kind of toppings these are normally like served with. Oh gosh, it literally has, I'm not sure. It has a serving suggestion on the back and it says to make like ice cream sandwiches out of them. I don't know about all that. I was thinking about like some powdered sugar or something. Oh, speaking of toppings, I got this maple butter and pumpkin spread. Um, maple butter probably would go great on those pancakes. For those who don't know, this is vegan, even though it says butter, a lot of people assume that it is actual dairy butter. Um, it's really just maple syrup. Organic maple syrup is the only ingredient. So it's basically like maple syrup as a solid um, once you start adding it to like hot pancakes or something like that, it does like kind of melt. But if you put it on toast, like something that's not hot, hot, um, it kind of spreads like butter. And then this pumpkin spread, I just noticed it says sweet and savory. 
and I don't think I've ever seen this product before. It says a tasty savory counterpoint to cheeses and cold cuts or to accompany roasted meats and vegetables. I really don't know what I'm going to do with this. Um, if you have any suggestions, let me know. But that com combination of like using it with savory foods sounds really good. This isn't something I just bought. This isn't something I... This isn't something I just bought, but I figured I would show it to you anyway because I just pulled it out of the bag, but it was something I took with me to my overnight. It's their instant cold brew coffee. And um, I feel like I go through phases where I drink instant coffee, especially like if I'm working a lot or doing overnight pet sitting. And then I realize like I just come to terms with the fact that it's like not that good <laughs> and I bought it out of desperation. Um, I would say this is probably one of the better ones I've tried. So if you've seen this and you've been kind of on the fence about it, uh, maybe give it a try. It says you can also have it hot. I've only had it cold and just combine it with cold water um, And it tastes pretty good. I like it. So next up we have this pepita salsa and this is the third jar of the salsa I've bought. Um, I bought it a few years ago, maybe two three years ago I bought one a couple weeks ago, and then I just got this one and the first time I got it I'm gonna admit I didn't even finish the whole jar because I didn't like it or I didn't think that I liked it the one that I got a couple weeks ago kind of refreshed my memory. I was like, oh yeah, I didn't like this. Why did I buy it again? But then I tried it a couple more times and I kind of realized I like it with specific foods. Um, the first time I tried it just a couple weeks ago, I put it on like a bowl with like rice, beans, veggies, and that kind of stuff. And I really didn't like it that way, but I do like it with chips and salsa. I like it on tamales. It almost reminds me, I mean, it tastes like salsa, but it almost reminds me of like a pasta sauce. That might be like kind of an exaggeration, but like <laughs> I would say like 75% salsa, 25% pasta sauce, if that makes any sense. I mean, normally you would think salsa is like 0% like pasta sauce, but I don't know. I really don't know how else to describe it. I've had to do retakes on this video like 20 times because my cat Herschel missed me, I guess, and he's just walking around meowing. Hersh. Okay, so this is another thing that is not a fall specific item, but it's a new item. It's this Borson dairy-free garlic and herb cheese. Oh, I didn't realize. It says right on the thing, you probably saw it already, but it's made with follow your heart. I didn't know that. I thought Borson, and hopefully I'm saying that right. I don't know. I've literally never eaten this brand. Um, I actually thought that maybe they were a new brand that came out since I've been vegan. That was why I haven't tried them, but I googled it and they've been around since the 60s. So <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't been vegan that long. I haven't even been alive that long. Um, but yeah, I thought they were just doing their own thing, but uh, that's cool that they worked with Follow Your Heart. I can't wait to try this. I know a lot of people have really liked it and people who are vegan now um, really liked the dairy version back when. So yeah, looking forward to trying this. It has pretty good reviews, I think. Okay, so I got this vegan, spicy vegan pozole, and I think I bought this before. Like, I thought, like, oh, that's a new item. I've never had that before. I think I did get it last year or the year before, and I remember being excited about it, and then it was gone. Does that sound familiar? Like, has this been around? I guess I could probably try to Google it. I don't know. I thought this was a new item, but the more I'm thinking about it, I think I have tried it before. Unless I'm thinking of a different brand. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. And then we also have the pumpkin spice hummus and this little bugger unfortunately i opened it to try a little bit on those korean pancakes this morning and it has a little spot of mold in it so i'm gonna take it back and get a new one i don't know off at the top of my head if i have tried this before i kind of don't think i have i don't know that's the thing with like trader joe's seasonal products there might be an item that i try and i love and then i go back to get another one and they're like moved on to the next season i feel like there's not enough time to like establish something as a favorite because i don't get to try it more than once which is also why i don't remember if i tried this like i didn't get to try it enough to like commit to memory so this is not a trader joe's item i actually went to target also to get a couple of things for my overnight and i got these mush overnight oats wasn't there three there should be three left okay here it is herschel what are you doing? So yeah, I pulled these out of the bag because I got them at Target. I took them on my overnight. Um, a couple of people recommended these when I tried the Trader Joe's overnight oats and told me to try or asked me if I've tried these. And I, I don't think I had at that point, but I don't really care for them. And here's why. I think it's because they have dates and I do like dates normally, but I also feel like we don't need to put them in everything, right? Like I like dates and like smoothies i like them in certain things but i don't like them here okay so next up we have two frozen things this uh japchae 
Hopefully I'm saying that right. I literally, I'm not sure. I don't think I've ever said that out loud before. And I just looked it up on someone's like YouTube video um, and that's how they pronounced it. And hopefully they're correct. So it's Korean sweet potato glass noodles and veg. So it's Korean sweet potato glass noodles and vegetable stir fry. It looks really good. It says vegan right on the label. I think I might heat this up for lunch right now before I go back to work. And the other is this kimchi and tofu soup, which also looks really good. Also says vegan on the label. Um, I don't think I've actually had anything like this before, but it looks really good. I do really like kimchi. Um, I'm like a later in life kimchi fan. I didn't think I liked it, but now that I've had it, I actually do. Okay, so a couple more things. I got a couple of varieties of JoJo's. I got the pumpkin spice JoJo's. This box is a little bit lighter because I've been working on it over the weekend. And these are pretty good. I don't think they have like a super strong pumpkin-y flavor, pumpkin spice or whatever. They go great with coffee. That's how I had them this morning with that cold brew. And then I also got the Halloween JoJo's. And these just taste like regular JoJo's, but obviously they're cute. They're little jack-o'-lantern people. Also, I like to put my JoJo's in the freezer. Um, I would recommend trying that if you haven't already. I think they taste better. I also like, because I don't want to sit down and eat like a whole box of JoJo's, like I'll eat a whole box of cookies, don't get me wrong, but JoJo's, like I feel like I want to snack on them over several weeks. So I think it keeps them fresher in there, but I just think they taste better in the freezer. I also grabbed this pumpkin body butter. Um, and I am very picky about like lotions and things like that. Um, I do tend to have kind of dry skin, especially this time of year. And a lot of times stuff with like fragrance and like alcohol and stuff like that, I end up regretting that I bought it because it like ends up drying out my skin more. Also my cat Penzone kind of has some fragrance like sensitivities. So I try not to wear stuff like this around him. And I will tell you the reason that I bought this one though. One is because I do like the pumpkin scent. And two is because it actually says vegan on the label. Which something that always frustrates me about Trader Joe's like bath and beauty products is they almost never say vegan. So you have to sit there and read like a really long list of ingredients. Look how long this list is. And a lot of their products will say cruelty free, but they don't say vegan. And I think um, a little bit of a labeling would go a long way. And I think they would probably sell more of their products. Well, to vegans anyway. So this one I've never had before. It is a gluten free pumpkin bread and muffin baking mix. I remember when I was a little kid, I used to go to this daycare called Kinder Care, and they used to serve these like muffin bread, muffin bread, <laughs> pumpkin bread. They used to have this like these bread like loaf thingies that they would cut up and that would be like our dessert after lunch or whatever. And um, this just made me feel, feel really nostalgic for that. It's a very basic thing. Um, it didn't, they didn't have, have any like frosting or anything on it, but I was like, I'm gonna try to make this and see if it tastes like daycare food. I don't have very high standards, obviously. Um, so the only, the mix is vegan. The only um, ingredient that it says to add is like, well, water, oil, etc. two large eggs. I don't know why I said etc. That's literally it, water, oil, and two large eggs. So I don't know which egg substitute I'm gonna use for these. Um, I was leaning, I've been using a lot of like chickpea, uh, like chickpea puree and it turns out pretty good. I don't know flavor wise. I mean, I usually do like brownies or blondies. So I would think if like blondies hide the flavor of the chickpeas, like the pumpkin would too. Plus I got that pumpkin hummus, which is literally pumpkin and chickpea flavor. Um, so I think it'll work, but I don't know. I probably won't be making this for a couple more weeks. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. I got these three seed sweet potato crackers, which these are, I don't think seasonal anymore. I think I first noticed them in fall time, like last year or the year before, I think. Um, but I think these are, have also stuck around. They also have the beet crackers and I think they're both pretty good. I also got this maple and sea salt popcorn. I've definitely had this before and I really, really like it. It's probably one of my favorite uh, Trader Joe's popcorns. I also really like the candy corn popcorn, which I don't think I saw last year. I got it two years ago, 2019. I don't think it came out last year and I didn't see it when I was there the other day. So hopefully they bring it back because that one was really good. Um, but this one is really good too and I think I'll probably stock up and get a couple of bags of these to last me after the season is over. All right, we're down to the last two things. So I got these bats, ghosts and bats potato chips. And to be honest with you, I don't think these are that great. I've had them before. I would say I probably buy a bag of these every year since they came out, which was probably close to 10 years ago. I remember taking them to potlucks like shortly after I went vegan for like Halloween things. So that was probably like 2011 or something like that. And aside from being cute, they are very, very cute. Um, I don't, flavor wise, I don't think they're that great. And Trader Joe's makes some great potato chips. Um, I think it's something to do with, I mean, they use like potato flour for these. 
Um, so then they have to like make it into that shape. So they probably put it in a sheet and then like cut them out. So I think it's not because it's not like a potato slice, it's potato flour. I think that's why. Okay, so I'm very confused. I was eating these last night with my the rainbow wrap that I got, and I just tried to dig out one of each shape to show you. And like I kept seeing like this face, this face, and thinking like, oh, that's the ghost because this is the ghost, I think, which kind of looks like a star. So I don't know, like, was this a mistake? Because the, the bat has a face on its torso, and then the ghost kind of looks like a Super Mario star. It kind of looks like the, the, the bat got stamped twice. It's like a bat-ghost hybrid. I'm not really sure. Okay, and then the last item in this haul, and like I said, there will probably be other hauls as I collect all of these items like Pokemon. So these are the Spooky Bats and Cat Sour Gummy Candies, and I didn't know right away that these are vegan. It does say gluten-free on the label, but it doesn't say vegan. So I read the label, the ingredients, like 10 times, like three times, and uh, they are vegan, and Trader Joe's has been coming out with like a few different varieties of vegan gummies, and it's confusing because they've also come out with a few varieties of like non-vegan gummies at the same time, and I think I kind of overly got my hopes up because I was thinking like now that they've come out with vegan gummies that taste great, they'll probably convert like all of their new seasonal items to vegan. Like why not, right? I mean, but I think they did come out with a non-vegan something seasonal, something for fall that looked cool, and I don't remember what it was, um, but these are pretty cool though. I definitely like the packaging. I definitely like bats and cats, including my cat who's meowing in the background. Like even the back of the package is cute. It's got more bats and then it's got the barcode as like a spooky little cat. Okay, we made it through the haul. That is the end. I'm going to do another one. Um, obviously there are a few items that I've, I'm missing. I didn't get the pumpkin, well the pumpkin spice hummus that was moldy. I'll have to replace that. I also wanted to get like the pumpkin bagels, the pumpkin uh, coffee creamer, and the oat milk. And Trader Joe's does tend to stagger the release of these new items. Um, so there may be new things coming that we don't know about yet. So make sure to subscribe if you want to see that. And also let me know in the comments if there are things that I missed that you want to make sure I pick up next time. And I will see you in the next video. I'm gonna go put all of this stuff away. Goodbye.